Welcome to The Last Door, Season 2, Episode 1, The Playwright. This is an episodic horror adventure game. I really enjoyed playing through the first season a while ago, and if you have not seen or played through the first season, then I would definitely recommend doing so, because otherwise this probably won't make much sense. I'll have links to where you can check it out in the description, as well as a link to my playthrough of it. Now before I get going, I want to briefly mention the sort of business model and where you can get this game because it's a little bit strange. So basically, when each episode is first released, you have to pay for it if you want to play it right then and there. But if you wait like a couple months, each episode actually becomes free. Which means that the entire first season, which came out a while ago, is actually completely free to play on their website. Which is very cool. However, they also released a collector's edition of the first season on Steam and GOG which actually improves upon the free web versions of the game. So as for which one to go for, do you go for the collector's edition, do you go for the free editions? I would say if you think you're really going to enjoy the game, then just go with the collector's edition because, you know, it's improved. And I definitely think they deserve the money. Uh, but if you're, you know, kind of on the fence about it, you're not quite sure if you want to play it, then what I would probably do is maybe play, th like, the first episode for free online. And then if you like it, maybe go for the Collector's Edition. But anyway, it's up to you. Alright, let's begin the playwright. They're coming. None of us could prepare for this. The visions, screaming, were merely a warning. And now it's too late. Last night, I had the nightmare again, but this time it was different. This time he talked to me. It was the same unknown street, void of any sound and life. I walked aimlessly as if I were lost. Then, I could hear it. The broken tromping on the wet cobblestones. The familiar sound of approaching, limping footsteps.
Then, as before, he stood in front of me, gazing unrelentlessly, like he was expecting something. This time, he spoke. Give me back what he took. Nothing else. Give me back what he took. No. I've fallen asleep again. What time is it? Dawn already. It's time. It was several months since Kaufman and I had found that mysterious letter in Anthony Beechworth's house. A letter never sent, with a cryptic warning of what would happen if a certain door were opened. It bore only the name of the addressee, Alexander Dupree. We felt sure Dupree was key to finding my patient and friend, Jeremiah Devitt, who had disappeared in such strange circumstances. Troubled by the death of his friend Anthony, Devitt had visited the school of his childhood and had never been seen again. Kaufman soon conveyed to me his deep concerns and warned that I should conduct any investigations with the utmost discretion. He pursued his own research, though his thoughts and methods remained a secret. In his last letter, he requested that I visit East Hill Lunatic Asylum in London. There were reasons to believe that Alexander had been institutionalized there for many years. I was asked to confirm this hypothesis and, if it proved correct, to gather whatever other information might arise. It's actually a, a map and I get to choose where to go. I wonder if this means I'm going to get to visit many different locations. Let's go to East Hill. Let's go visit a lunatic asylum. What could go wrong? A horror game in a lunatic asylum. I'm sure this will be pleasant. What's happening? I think the game crashed. Okay, that was strange. Every time I clicked continue, it took me back to the same spot. Where it just was a black screen and nothing was happening. But it seems like if I run the game in administrator mode, it works. I don't know why. It's just a folder on my desktop. I didn't expect to have to use admin privileges. Not that it matters, but very strange. Anyway, let's continue. So this is East Hill Lunatic Asylum. I hope I can find information on Alexander Dupree here. Sea monster found in St. Ives. Alright. Sounds legit. Good morning. I would like to purchase a newspaper. Yes, sir. It's sixpence. I'm afraid I don't have sixpence. Can you make change for a shilling? I'm sorry I can't, sir. But you know where to find me when you have coins. Or when you have the coins. I suppose a shilling is a coin, just not the right one. What can you tell me about this building? The asylum? 
I've never been inside, and hope I never will. It's full of crazies, you know. Have you seen anything unusual around here? No, but maybe if you bought a newspaper. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Goodbye. Need to find a convenience store to exchange my money. He's still lunatic asylum. Anything to the left, or do I have to go inside? Alright, let's go inside. I'm assuming this place is still running and not abandoned. Because the only thing creepier than a normal lunatic asylum is an abandoned creepy lunatic asylum. Good morning. Ah, yes. A lovely morning. Sunlight of a quite fascinating character. I beg your pardon? The light. It makes everything look different. You see, light touches things, soaks into them and changes their nature. It makes them shimmer, or makes them die. Okay. Do you live here, in the hospital? I do indeed. My family is a generous benefactor to East Hill. They had me committed, but I don't blame them. They're just incapable of appreciating my art. Or any art, for that matter. They mistake it for insanity. What are you drawing? I'm not just drawing, my friend. I'm trying to feel the light, to translate its power to the surface of the paper. Those animals don't like it, though. They don't want me to succeed, so they take them away. They take my drawings and they study, study them and they laugh, because my eyes can see the light and theirs are blind. But someday, someday everyone will understand. Who are they, the ones who take your art away? Those foolish caretakers. They hide behind a big mirror where they think themselves safe. And they look at me. They observe me. They even take notes. Would you happen to know where your drawings are now? I suspect they are somewhere in the archives, since I've been I've seen confiscated items taken there before. You seem different from the rest. Can I trust you? I've been trying to sneak in for days now, but Miss Riswell keeps a tight guard on the door. I even stole a key from one of those guards. You're a doctor. Surely you could gain entry. If you could recover my drawings, I would be so grateful. Here, take the key with you. Well, that was quick. I haven't even gotten inside of the asylum, and already I've been given a quest. Do you know a man named Alexander Dupree? Oh, right. I keep forgetting I should read what he actually says rather than the little blurb. My name is Dr. Wakefield. I'm looking for a man who lived here some time ago. Would you happen to know one Alexander Dupree? The name does not ring a bell. I've not been here for long, though. You should ask the other patients. They may be able to help you. Some have been here for many years. Or you could ask one of the others, the brutes who keep us here. I must go. Have a nice day. Thank you. Lovely chap. That's not the front door, is it? Yeah, this has got to be the front door. This place seems warm and inviting. <laughs> I feel like I've aged ten years just by stepping through the front door. God, what a depressing place. 
The rose window brings a solemn air to the room. Good morning, madam. My name is Dr. Wakefield. I am a psychiatrist. Oh my! Good morning. Forgive my manners. I get so excited when we have visitors. We don't get many these days, and certainly we are lacking experts like you. What do you mean, you lack experts? Every year we get less funds from the Crown. First, the doctors started to leave. Then it was the caretakers. Now, very few remain. But we have a responsibility. To our poor patients, do we not? We must care for them. They cannot be out, living with the proper people. We must keep ourselves safe. And our patients, too, of course. I'm looking for a man who used to be a patient here a few years ago. His name is Alexander Dupree. Did you perchance ever meet him? Alexander Dupree. Yes, there was one with a foreign name. I remember something of him. A good man, if I recall correctly. An educated man. But there was something strange about him, wasn't there? I believe it scared some of the other patients. You never know with this lot. I'm sorry that I can't remember much. There have been so many people here, it's hard to keep track. Have you worked here for long? Yes, a long time. I can scarcely remember how many years. Time goes slowly in here. And the isolation. The rules don't allow us to leave. I don't know what is happening in the world anymore. But we have our duty, do we not? Who else will care for our patients? Wait, what? She said that the rules don't allow them to leave. Why would the people who work here not be allowed to leave? That's very strange. May I request access to the Institute's archives? There should be some information there about the man I am looking for, Mr. Dupree. I am sorry, Doctor, but the archives are private. We must not allow anyone to access them without the proper authority. Many of our patients come from good families, you see, and we take great care to respect their privacy. But do not look so crestfallen. You would not find much in any case. It is a long time since they have been organized. Alright, fair enough. Nothing more to say. Or, no, nope, there's more to say. Our work here takes a great deal of discipline, Dr. Wakefield. As I am sure you appreciate. It is rewarding in itself, but... Oh, I do wish I had something to occupy my mind more. To help me pass the time. How that would ease my burden. I shall not bother you, then. Sounds like she wants something. Hmm. Well, given that she just mentioned that she doesn't have any news of the outside world, perhaps she would like a newspaper. And it just so happens there's a newspaper boy outside, but I don't have the right money. Which means, in true adventure game fashion, I'm probably going to have to do something with glue and a stick and a pair of underwear to finally get the right change so I could finally buy the newspaper to give to the woman and she's going to give me something that's going to allow me to do the... Yeah. We'll see. I'm calling it right now, though. I'm calling it Ridiculous Adventure Game Puzzle Incoming. A serene, bucolic landscape with gentle colors. I don't even know what bucolic means, or whether I'm even pronouncing it correctly. A bookshelf. These books are not volumes of psychiatry or medical science, but old serial novels for patients to read. A portrait of a severe-looking man, most probably the founder of the Institute. <laughs> I don't think I'd be allowed to go back here. Oh, that's the archives. Okay. Is this the key to the archives? Itself? That the guy gave me? Well, regardless, I don't think I could sneak in until I distract her. 
It's probably what the newspaper is for. An oil picture portraying Dymphna, patron saint of the psychiatrists, but also of those who suffer neurological disorders and victims of incest. She was killed by her own father, who chopped off her head after she refused to marry him when her mother died. Ugh. Okay. That's weird. Let's see if I can go speak to the other patients. This must be the recreational wing, where patients relax and pass the time. Perhaps here I can find someone who met Alexandre Dupree while he was... institutionalized? A sunny beach lapped by the waves of a gentle sea. The stone bust keeps the patients silent company. Marble bust of Hygia, Greek goddess of physical and mental health. Cheerful pastoral scene. The warm decoration of this room suggests a great deal of sensitivity to the patient's moral needs. Variety of old fashioned landscapes that portray nature as tame and welcoming. Alright, let's meet this person. A man wearing a worn out military uniform. Lost in God knows what thoughts. Excuse me, sir. I cannot help but notice your uniform. Were you in the army? Leave me alone. You do not want to talk to a coward such as myself. But I do. Sir? No. It is odd that only this window is shuttered. The curtains cast a mottled shadow over this corner of the room. Good morning, madam. My name is Wakefield. I'm looking for a former patient of this institution. The rumbling. She doesn't seem to have noticed me. Madam, if I may persist, have you been living here for long? The rumbling. Okay. Uh, I think she's sensing something that I'm not. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. An eyeless gaze. I'm looking for a man that you may have met. His name is Alexander Dupree. What a strong reaction upon hearing Mr. Dupree's name. She must have at least met him. How can I get her to talk to me? Good morning. I'm a psychiatrist, Dr. Wakefield. Quite an impressive institution you have here. Can I ask for your assistance? I'm looking for a former patient of this institution. His name is Dupree. I'm sorry, sir. I have never heard that name before. Hmm, how long have you worked here, then? I mean, you should know the names of all the patients, I would think. There certainly doesn't really seem to be that many. Maybe I could ask one of your senior colleagues? Well, you could ask Miss Riswell in the entrance hall. She's been here for years. Maybe for too long. You know we caretakers live here with the patients. And we are not allowed to leave the asylum's premises. This life can get to you if you don't take proper care. I try to keep as much distance as possible from the lunatics.
The asylum is quite big, but I can't help noticing that there aren't many patients around. Well, apart from those in the isolation ward, it is true that there are not many patients at the present time. But there are even less of us caretakers now. We are only three for the whole hospital. For what I've been told, in the old times, the income was enough to provide for everything we needed. A complete staff, proper accommodation for the patients, and the best doctors. But as the newer, bigger regional asylums were built, the Crown's support was gradually withdrawn from East Hill. Soon, everyone started leaving. And this is what remains. This patient seems to have been deeply unsettled by my question. What condition does she suffer from? Miss Khan, you mean? She has been here for a long time, even before I arrived. She has some kind of nervous condition, but the doctors have given up discovering its cause. She also seems obsessed with certain subjects, such as ancient culture. Well, thank you, in any case. I will leave you to work in peace. Okay. Topics of ancient culture. Maybe she would actually be willing to discuss that. I also need to get a newspaper. What's this way? Is that staff only? Oh, apparently not. Okay, that's a creepy room. Didn't the guy talking about the light who wanted me to get his drawings back, didn't he mention something about this mirror? An unusually large mirror. Yes. Looks like a therapy log. Edward Rowan, 27. Acute Dementia. September 25th, 1891. Wait, Acute Dementia at age 27? That is... Very uncommon. Dementia typically takes place in... When people are elderly. Mr. Roan's condition has degenerated since the last session. He is restless, as if the morphine had no effect on him. For the last week, he has been obsessive. Troubled for reasons unknown. September 17th, the patient's dosage, dosage has been doubled to no effect. September 29th, Dr. Weddle has been attacked and bitten in the face. Four men were needed to subdue the patient, Mr. Roan. Three markings were found on his body upon examination. Self-harm is a possible cause. October 3rd, Mr. Roan is getting better day by day, both physically and mentally. His habits have changed considerably. He now shows an interest in religion, and spends his time murmuring prayers, albeit ones unknown to my colleagues and me. Eh, he's probably praying to Cthulhu. It's perfectly normal, don't worry. Oh no, 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 no. I'm done with it, don't read it again. A glass jar full of a transparent liquid that may or may not be water. There is a coin resting at the bottom. Hmm. A coin. I could use that. I hope it was water. Don't I need six pence, though? Is this... one pence? <laughs> the water jar is full of water. That is the best description I have ever read. There's a thin piece of metal holding the window open. What the hell? <laughs>